Gregory O'Brien. Storm warning. If cloud laden, the weather teaches us a windswept humanity, our children teach us a kind responsibility to all that is yet formed. Beyond beacon wind turbine, the half formed storm dictates its warning. And while our blindness teaches us how to to a bombed bridge out because our children in their wisdom cannot from a moonlit ridge our mathematics suggests storms have their structures too and how the southerly is responsible for more than a dim day, dim day's light ice trails and early delivery from children but it is the distant percussion of the inner ear our deafness that will teach us to go on teaching us until there is no blueness on our face. Of the earth that a storm warning is only once, then all we are left with, the storm. Hone Tufari, Flood. In the back country, hard rain is bucketing. Here in the narrowing light, the river bellows fatly. From high ground I mark twin rows of willow, disheveled arms, clutching drunk roots, hoarding bits of old bridge planking, the body of a beast, puff-bellied, hind feet sticking out. I ask, when will the waters clear, the eels breathe easy again? Shall I be able to ford the river soon and visit Aline Aunt? Lurice Edmund, September. The mountain leaps and stands breaking horizons. It is the first land out of falling waters. The wind finds it like a discovering dove. In the wheeling light it is still, construing containment, poise from intuit idiom of the earth. No flower was white before this blossoming of snow, no September sharp with spring until the morning. I shall learn the lessons of God from the mountain. It has entered my imagination, eternal indifference, eternal scope, eternal reprieve. It is never the same on any two visits. It is never the same in any particular, only in generalities. Tide and such matters wave height and suction, pebbles that rattle. It doesn't presume to wear a white coat, but it questions you like a psychologist as you walk beside it on its long couch. Oh, here's a classic. James K. Baxter, High Country Weather. Alone we are born and die alone, yet see the red gold cirrus o'er so snow mountains shine. Upon the upland road, rise easy, stranger, surrender to the sky, your heart of anger. Beautiful. There's another James K. I want to read here. It's my favorite James K. Baxter poem. It's in here somewhere. Where will I find it? Page 105. James K. Baxter. The Maori Jesus. I saw the Maori Jesus walking on Wellington Harbour. He wore blue dungarees. His beard and hair were long. His breath smelt of mussels and parial. When he smiled, it looked like the dawn. When he broke wind, the little fishes trembled. When he frowned, the ground shook. And when he laughed, everybody got drunk. The Maori Jesus came on shore and picked out his 12 disciples. One clean toilets in the railway station. 
His hands were scrubbed red to get the shit out of his paws. One was a call girl who turned up cut up for nothing. One was a housewife who'd forgotten the pill and stuck her TV set in the rubbish can. One was a little office clerk who tried to set fire to the government buildings. Yes, and there were several others. One was an old sad queen, and one was an alcoholic priest going slowly mad in a respectable parish. The Maori Jesus said, Man, from now on the sun will shine. He did no miracles. He played the guitar sitting on the ground. The first day he was arrested for having no lawful means of support. The second day he was beaten up by the cops for telling his D that his house was not in order. On the third day he was charged for being a Maori and given a month at Mount Crawford. The fourth day he was sent to Porirua for telling the screw the sun would stop rising. The fifth day lasted seven years. And while he worked in the asylum laundry, never out of steam. The sixth day he told the head doctor, I am the light in the void. I am who I am. The seventh day he was lobotomized. The brain of God was cut in half. On the eighth day the sun did not rise. It didn't rise the day after. God was neither alive nor dead in the darkness of the void. The mountainous, mild, deep, civilized darkness sat on the earth from then till now. Why, I'm, I believe it is, actually. That was by James K. Baxter, that one, called The Maori Jesus. You'll have to Google that one. I'm pretty sure it's New Zealand Poetry Day. <laughs> Church Street Poetry Day. Yeah, 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 yeah. Screw the rest of the country. Poetry on Church Street. That's what we need. One last one. This one's by Hone Tufari. A talk with my cousin alone. And afterwards, after the shedding of mucus, the droll speeches, and the hongi for my cousin in the box. We were called to meal at the long tables, but I hadn't come for that. I could hear the Tasman comas shredding themselves nearby, wishing then for a pouring beak of sound to help me reassemble myself. Taking my shoes off, I trudged a steep doom, sand, a cool silken lisp spilling through my toes. Bottom on the hill of sand, I wondered if dry, dry leaves, whether the Pakya marine authorities would sell us back ephemeral Maori land, now exposed to bird, bleached crab and shrimp, lying somewhere between low watermark and high. A pounding gravel is the sun today, a brassy auctioneer. The sea is assistant of this no instant. Favour offered me in a stint. I cushion my elbows deep in the sand. I'm the only bidder. For this beautiful piece of land, seascape, I will start the bidding at 20 falling axes per square centimetre, said the sun, looking hard at me for an earlobe twitch or other sign. Get stuffed, I replied, holding my middle finger straight up turning it slowly. Idly, I think that after 11 o'clock, prayers tomorrow, and before lunch, my cousin will have gone to ground. They may ban tangihanga in the future, I say to him. Right now you're doing your job. This moment is forever as displayed fingers of the hand drawn together like a fist. I looked up at the sun and blink. The sun is beside itself dancing. There are two of them.